Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's another edition of Conform. Conform is our online daily devotional in which we sit at the feet of Jesus so he will breathe on us and empower us to become more and more like him. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Can we pray in tongues for a couple of, of minutes before we take off this morning? Makre do bestelere gosta balara sata yengle devre deme shtulara sata maglo deve riga dashtelere bede sande legre devo shteze ikro pada balara bo sendile heshtelere bo sana mangle dere bedi gonda lara bo shtelere bede sete Thank you, Jesus. Meshta gavele rebe dele beri use talarambe de hashte ile grefe de belere budushte le brata lara budusete. Go ahead and pray in tongues with me. Makra dafa tosta lara hate yegle neble kitara kustege beli hishte zagre devi dishte loro budusete yeglara bada sandile hesto. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. And the people of Jesus said, Amen. Praise God. You are welcome. All right. Today, it's a very special day in Conform. Today and a couple of days to follow. Very, very special. Uh, We will take a break from our studies of the lessons, teachings, uh, lessons from the teachings, the ministry, and the life of Jesus um, we uh, finished yesterday with the leadership lessons. We'll take a break today and we will um, entertain a guest speaker. He's somebody that I respect a lot and is um, a giant in the realm of the spirit. All right. Um, I happen to be with him today, tomorrow, and probably the next day. And he will be talking to us. He's a prophet by calling. Like I usually will say, um, it's one person that I know is a modern day prophet. Modern day prophet. I believe in his prophetic ministry a whole lot. All right. And this, uh, uh, he will be talking to us on understanding the prophetics. Understanding the prophetics. Okay. I believe somebody will receive something in this meeting in this uh, ed- ed- edition that will change your life for good. I am with Prophet Wale Akilaja and he will be speaking to us this morning on understanding the prophetic. Good morning, leaders, ministers of God, powerful people. It's a, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. I honor the Lord for his servant, Dr. Chris Williams, a covenant friend, a powerful, gifted, blessed man of God. I thank God for the great work he's doing all over the world through his pastoral ministry, his teaching ministry, and the medical field, and even this ministerial college. Thank God for the Heston Church and all the ministries under Dr. Chris Williams. I believe, God, that this time of sharing will be a blessing to all of us. Uh, he's asked me to speak on understanding the prophetic I thank God that you know I've been privileged to serve God and to be used of God in ministry for a number of decades now. I'm, I'm trusting God for some powerful wisdom and insights to come across in this few minutes that we'll be sharing together. I want to start from 1 Corinthians 12, the Amplified Classic Version. I'm asked to speak on understanding the prophetic. First of all, the nature of God is that is a, God is a God of revelation. God is a God of wisdom. God is a spirit. So he always wants to reveal. He always wants to unveil. This world is a supernatural world. It's a spiritual world. We live in a world where the supernatural, the spiritual controls the physical. So for us to have dominion, for us to have authority, for us to have rulership, for us to have excellent success, excellent impact in this world, in ministry, in life, in any area, we need access to the supernatural and spiritual world to get revelation information and details of things going on in the spiritual world to be able to impact and impact our natural world. So the prophetic is a revelation into 
the mind of God, the thoughts of God, the spirit of God, is a revelation into what is going on in the supernatural world. Is a revelation into the thoughts of God about the present, about the future. Is a revelation into the activities of the spirit world. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to First Corinthians twelve. Let's get some word in. First Corinthians twelve, the Amplified Classic Version says, "Now about spiritual gifts. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special." endowments of supernatural energy i do not want you to be misinformed now about the spiritual gifts the special endowments of supernatural energy brethren i do not want you to be misinformed you know that when you were heathen you were led off after idols that could not speak habitually as impulse directed and whenever the occasion might arise Therefore, I want you to understand the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God can ever say Jesus be cursed. Uh, The first foundation of understanding the prophetic is to know that we are talking about the prophetic based on the finished work of Jesus Christ, based on the Spirit of the living God, based on the Holy Spirit of God. There are people who see by supernatural powers and are not the powers of God. We are talking about the prophetic based on the power of the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. What Jesus did to give us access into the realm of the Spirit is through his blood, through his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. So he is our source. He is the spirit of prophecy. He is the Almighty. So the Holy Spirit of living God, the third person of the Trinity, is the one that furnishes access into the spirit realm, access into the supernatural realm for the believer. For the minister. So this access gives us insight into the prophetic. Gives us access into the prophetic. Now there are dimensions. There is the gift of prophecy. There is the ministry of the prophet. And there is prophetic revelation. Let's go back to that verse 1 again of 1 Corinthians 12. He says, Now about spiritual gifts. Spiritual endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. The old King James and the new King James says, I don't want you to be ignorant. So God doesn't want you to be ignorant about the prophetic, about any spiritual gift or spiritual revelation. There is divine information that will help us to access the fullness of the mind or thoughts and the will of God. As we access this information, we are more impactful, we are more, more, you know, instrumental in God's hands in making things happen for the kingdom of God. Okay? Let's go to the fourth verse of 1 Corinthians 12. It says, Now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of, of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers so the understanding of the prophetic having a gift in the prophetic is an extraordinary power it's not a natural power it's an extraordinary power it's an endowment it's a gift it's not something you work for you labor for in the sense of having a sense of entitlement or working with your physical strength or power to get it it is a gift from god now there are things a person can do to position himself to operate in the gift of prophecy and to begin to operate in the supernatural revelation. You know, the ministry of a prophet is something that you have to be called into. You don't just choose yourself to become a prophet. But the gift of prophecy, operating in gifts of revelation, like word of knowledge, the sending of spirits, gift of interpretation of tongues, all those gifts are gifts that help you to access supernatural revelation, tongues and interpretation, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the sending of spirits, you know. Those gifts are gifts that help you to access the realm of revelation. Working in, or operating in those gifts, you can convert those particular gifts or manifestations of the Spirit and desire them, hunger for them. Of course, there are some basic things that have to be in place in our lives. You know, working with God, living a holy and pure life, spending quality time praying in the Holy Spirit, spending quality time worshipping God, studying after people who have operated in these dimensions, you know, people like Kenneth Hagin, you know, 
all those things help. Listening to videos, watching, listening to messages and videos, you know, on YouTube of people who have operated in this supernatural realm. All these things help to key into the operations of the gifts of the Spirit. And there are quite a number of these videos on, on YouTube, people, people like Kenneth Hagin, for instance. Let's go back to this scripture again, verse 4 of First Corinthians 12. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, and extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit, and they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. There are distinctive varieties of service and ministration, but it's the same Lord who is served. So there are different gifts, there are different anointings, there are different operations of the Spirit, but the prophetic is a dimension of the Spirit. The prophetic gift is a dimension of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit that bring prophetic revelation, that bring supernatural insight, which I just touched on briefly, these dimensions, these gifts are furnished or administered by the power of the Holy Spirit. So even understanding the Holy Spirit, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit is critical, is key to operating any of the gifts of the Spirit, any of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and definitely operating the prophetic. Because the prophetic, you know, is revelation. The prophetic is insight. The prophetic is an unveiling of the spirit realm. And the Holy Spirit is the custodian. He's the doorkeeper. He's the gatekeeper of the spirit realm. So you need the operation of the spirit to be able to tap into this realm of the prophetic and this realm of the supernatural. Praise the Lord. Now, it says in verse 5 that there are distinctive varieties of service and ministration, but it's the same Lord who is served. There are distinctive varieties of operation that's in the supernatural and the gifts of the Spirit, in the, in the powers of the, Holy, uh, of the Holy Spirit. There are distinctive varieties of operation, of working to accomplish things, but it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. Now, let me quickly say this. The, the prophetic realm and the gift of the prophetic is not meant to just excite and be sensational. The, uh, the prophetic is meant to impart to impact, to be a blessing. Let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians 14. We're coming back to 1 Corinthians 12, but let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians 14 and see what the scripture says. Okay? It says, Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest, and earnestly desire and, co- and cultivate spiritual endowments. Earnestly co- desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, gifts, especially that you may prophesy. The Bible says you should earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Wow. The Apostle Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians 14 says we should eagerly and pursue and seek this love, the love of God, make it our aim, our great quest, and earnestly desire and cultivate spiritual endowments, we should earnestly desire and cultivate spiritual endowments. And especially that you may prophesy. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul saying, we should desire that especially that you may prophesy. I think that's profound. Hallelujah. So especially that you may prophesy. Interpret, in the back, it now says, interpret divine will and purpose in inspired teaching and preaching. Preaching and teaching. So the prophetic realm is not just gifts of the spirit that's a critical part of it but the prophetic realm is also teaching you can actually teach under a prophetic flow of the spirit you can preach under a prophetic flow of the spirit it's not something you thought up it's not something something you necessarily researched it's a teaching that came to you as you're speaking or as you're praying by the inspiration of the holy spirit it's a divine deposit it's not something you of course, study is critical and important, but the prophetic teaching that flowed to you by the Holy Spirit is something that came to you by divine inspiration, by revelation, not something you researched or looked over, but it, God breathed that message on you, and as you begin to speak, that message begins to flow supernaturally. That message begins to flow inspirationally. That is a dimension of the prophetic too, teaching and preaching under the inspiration and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That's a dimension of the prophetic too. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit has dimensions of the prophetic as we key in to the power of the Holy Spirit. God can begin to reveal that anointing in teaching. God can begin to reveal that anointing in preaching. And those who are listening to you, 
will experience an impartation of God in specific areas of, our li- of their lives where they need God's visitation. You might not even know what's going on in their lives, but as you speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the prophetic, as you're teaching or preaching, what can minister to specific situations in people's destinies and people's lives that will break yokes or, or undo the, op- the operation of the enemy and will cause people to say, oh, truly, God has touched me. God has visited me. God has done something in my life. Praise the Lord. So God was saying to the Apostle Paul that we should convert to prophesy. We should desire, strongly desire, earnestly desire that we may prophesy, especially that we may prophesy. Hallelujah. Okay, let let me just read verse 2. It says, For no one who speaks in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 now, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands him or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding but on the other hand the one who prophesies the one who prophesies who interprets the divine will and purpose is inspired I beg your pardon the one who prophesies who interprets the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching speaks to men for they are building and constructive spiritual progress, encouragement, and consolation. So these are some of the things that prophecy will do. Let me read it again. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies, who interprets the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching, speaks to men for their building, for their upbuilding. So the prophetic upbuilds constructive spiritual progress so the prophetic releases in people who hear the person ministering the prophetic constructive spiritual progress so the prophetic gift the prophetic grace is meant to help people to progress spiritually it's meant to help people to be built up so the person who is speaking prophetically speaks to men for their up building if your words are not building people up then that's not the prophetic of jesus christ if your words are not constructive it is not a prophetic of Jesus Christ. If your words are not encouraging, it's not a prophetic of Jesus Christ. If your words don't have consolation in them, at some point, it's not the prophetic of Jesus Christ. So the prophetic of Jesus, the prophet that comes from the word, that comes inspired by the spirit of Jesus, by the spirit of Christ, because remember, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. He says that when who prophesies, speaks to men for their upbuilding, for their constructive spiritual progress, for their encouragement, for their consolation. Hallelujah. So the prophetic must do all these things. It must upbuild. It must give spiritual progress. It must be constructive. It must have encouragement. It must have consolation. Praise the name of the Lord. That does not mean that God cannot reveal a word to correct somebody's behavior, correct something that's going wrong in somebody's life, and help them to move into a better spiritual walk with God, you know, by living sin or doing right, or maybe help them against some evil that the enemy has planned and give them divine information about that. But this, the center of the prophetic realm is encouragement, is consolation, is constructive spiritual progress, is upbuilding, hallelujah, is edification. In King James calls it edification. That is upbuilding, praise the name of the Lord. So if you are going to operate in the prophetic, that has to be in the back of your mind, that you are an instrument of God for people's consolation, for people's encouragement, for people's constructive spiritual progress, for people's upbuilding. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, it's very critical you understand that, you know, you are an inst- the person who's operating the prophetic is an instrument of consolation in the hands of God. It's an instrument of encouragement. It's an instrument of upbuilding in the hands of God. Hallelujah. So, it says that in verse 7, listen to this. This is a very, very important. Okay, let me read verse 6 first. There are distinctive varieties of operation working to accomplish this thing, working to accomplish things. But it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all. So the prophetic is inspiration. So that's why it requires a lot of prayer to operate in the prophetic. Because it's not something you thought of. It's not something you imagined. It's not something you calculated. It's not something you just heard, in, you know, whispered to you in your mind. No. It's the Holy Spirit inspiring you. So to be in that realm, your physical nature, your fleshly nature, your human nature, many times has to really be under subjection so that you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Like in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, the Spirit and the bride say, come. 
you know, he that has an hand, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So when the Spirit of God wants to operate through the person who is catching on to a prophetic flow, a prophetic gift, or a prophetic inspiration, the person has to yield to the Holy Spirit. That process of yielding, because we have many things distracting us, worries, anxieties, thoughts, even important things, work, family, children, you know, so you need quality time, spending time in the Word and in prayer. Prayer, in worship, in praying in the Spirit. We'll talk more about that over the next couple of days. You know, in praying in the Spirit, in spending time in the Word, in spending time in worship, sometimes praying, sometimes fasting. When your body is under, the realm of the Spirit becomes an easy place to access. You know, Ganegi in a blessed memory said, if we would spend quality time praying in tongues and meditating on the Word of God, the realm of the Spirit will be as comfortable to you as what are they as, as as a fish inside water you the one must be like so if like fish inside water so if you spend quality time praying the spirit and meditating on the word you'll be comfortable in the realm of the spirit like a fish, fish is comfortable inside water so those are basic things we have to start programming ourselves to understand if we are going to walk in the realm of the prophetic praise the name of the lord okay praise god the prophet will continue tomorrow i'm sure you gain something from it as you go today your day is blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Calamity is far from you. Pestilence is not your portion. In the name of Jesus. In Eston Church, God has told us that calamity is far from us. In Jesus' name, you, you are blessed. Favor is your portion. Glory is your portion. Open doors, you experience them today. Open gates to cities. Open gates to multinationals. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The daily loads of benefits meant for today. You, they will not elude you. In Jesus name. Have a very splendid day. Amen.